Okay, the day 62 solution, let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is import Replit DB. And I'm also going to import some libraries that are usually quite useful for us. I'm gonna import date time. I'm gonna import OS and I'm gonna import time itself. They're always a good thing to have. I'm gonna start with my subroutine for adding a tweet because when, once we've added to the database, we'll know exactly how it's gonna work. So I'm gonna start with my code for adding a diary entry. Once we've added it, we'll know how it works and then we'll be able to work from there. So I reckon, if I put in my def in there in the first place, there we go. Uh, one little uh, tip is if you press enter after a colon and it doesn't auto indent, normally you've done something wrong with the code. So it's always best to check in the first place, like I just did there. So I need to start by clearing the screen. So I'm gonna do something like time.sleep just for a second, os.system clear, to make sure that screen is clear. And then I'm going to do, I'm gonna get the timestamp. Now this is date time, should have been equals. This is date time dot date time dot now. That'll give us the exact timestamp. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna print that out. I'm gonna use an F string to make it a little bit easier. And I'm going to just put diary entry for that. I'm gonna put my timestamp in there. That should put that as a heading. I'm gonna print out a blank line then I'm going to do this just as a prompt for somebody to type in their entry. Once I've got it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in as just plain text. I'm going to put it in as a dictionary here because I don't think there's any point. That is only one thing to go into a specific key. So I'm going to insert a database key. So I'm going to bring the code in there and make sure it's in the right place. My key is going to be my timestamp and my value is going to be the entry. So with that done, we will go back to the main menu. Viewing then. So again, I'm gonna add a little pause and clear the screen at the start. And let's get the entries. Now I'm gonna do this by pulling in all our keys. Now the keys should come in in chronological order. So that means the oldest one will be at the top because they would have been sorted. The nice thing about timestamp is that it sorts itself into an order straight away. So the earliest entry will be at the top and the latest entry will be at the bottom. We want it the other way around though. So I'm gonna use some of my string slicing magic to move this around a little bit. Now you remember string slicing, strings are just arrays. If I do that, I should get it backwards. A backwards list of times, which started at the earliest and ends at the latest. Now starts at the latest and ends at the earliest. So the most recent one will be at the top. I'm then gonna go through it for key in keys. I'm gonna print out using F strings and the three quote trick, a heading. So I'm gonna put my timestamp in there. So that should be the key itself. I'm then going to go onto a new line and on the new line, I'm gonna print out DB square bracket key, which will be the actual content. I'm then gonna print out a blank line and I'm going to ask the user if they want to go to the next one or to exit. So I'm gonna put opt for option. I'm gonna do input. I'm gonna do next or exit. I'm gonna put a little chevron and a bit of a space. Now, the only thing I care about is if the user said exit. So I'm gonna say if opt.lower, so I'm gonna make it all lowercase, and I'm actually gonna chop out just the first letter as well, to make that easy. So they could have misspelled exit, as long as they put an E there, we can exit. And if they're exiting, they're breaking. Of course, if they're not exiting, it's gonna loop the code up here again, pause it for a second, clear the screen, and show the next, but well, it's not gonna pause it and clear the screen actually. So let's take that out of there, and put that in the loop. So now that's gonna happen every time we print a new one out. It'll print out the timestamp and the key, and ask them if they want to see the next one or exit. So we've got to read the diary one entry at a time as we go through it. Now, the main menu. We're gonna do a while true. And within the while true, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the menu. In fact, what we'll do is to start with os.system clear. So if I've picked an option that goes back to the menu, it will wipe everything out. We're gonna do menu equals input 
having some difficulty typing here today. And I'm going to say one is add n, two is view. If menu equals equals one, remember I'm putting them in quote six, I haven't converted them to numbers. I'm going to call the subroutine add entry. Otherwise, I'm going to call the subroutine view entry. And that's about it. Let's see if it works. So let's add an entry. It's got my timestamp on there. Today, I was having a great time doing the 100 days of code. Okay, let's add another one. I think I answered it correctly. Let's see if view works. If view works, the first one we should be, we should view is the most recent one. So we should see, I think I answered it correctly. Okay, so I'm crashing that. What am I doing wrong then? Well, if we get rid of this first, this entire line, let's see if it works with just keys in the normal direction. So we go to view. Oh, and it already is. <laughs> so I didn't need that option at all. Oh, well, so what's actually happening is that it's loading it in the opposite order. So it is storing it in the way I wanted it, which is quite nice. So if I go to exit, I end up back at the main menu. So there we go. I didn't need that fancy swapping around trick after all. But if I wanted to work, what might I have done? Well, there is, there we go. So one of the ways I could do that and use that trick is to actually turn it into a list. So basically turn it into a list of individual keys. And the, this is, this is just casting, like we've done with ints and strings before. I'm just casting it as a list. I'm saying this set, which is a different kind of data structure is actually a list now. Uh, and as it's a list, I can mess around with it and do what I want. So I could have brought that back in, but as it turned out, the default order of the database was fine anyway. But there we go, there's a solution. Before we move on, we haven't got a password on it. Well, it's quite easy to put a password on it, isn't it? All we need to do is start here. If password is not equal to my password of baldy one, then I'm going to print incorrect and I'm going to exit the program. We'll just test that out. What doesn't it like about that line there then? Invalid syntax, uh, pass might be a proper, there we go. Pass is a command, so we can't reuse that command. There we go, if I get it wrong, if I type the variable names in right, if I get it wrong, closes the program. If I get it right, <laughs> if I get it right, there we go, I get in. So we have built a secret diary program now. And remember the best part about this is if you publish this, anyone that forks your REPL doesn't get your database. They get a new blank database. So no one will see your private diary entries, only you. Thank you.